Yeah, I think for Vitality, it's just, well, we're expecting a sim is what they usually do, but even that's still quite interesting in itself. Shadow back on the breach, what he was mostly known for mm -hmm. on FPX. And then also Vac and Kada playing the duelists whenever they get a point. Kada's locked his in with the jet. You expect Vac on the raise, who we kind of pointed out, like might be able to sort of come back to life a little bit on that duelist. Didn't really have the most success over on Binds. I guess the most interesting thing for Guild is Leo and Sage, is something that I don't yeah. think we've seen at all through these qualifiers because they've not played this map at all. His Sova's been so good. What can he do on the Sage? I, I do wonder why uh, they've they kind of stuck to uh, what they were running before right guild before they made the changes except for the Astra and also safe moving from the rays onto the jet as well what kind of impact uh, Ryan is that gonna have uh, it, it's more like what we said about bind a lot of that utility that rays can provide to uh, clean out some of those closed in areas but it was again something that guild dealt with easily they didn't really have to worry so much about not having a boom bot for example and if safe can get the operator online especially on this defense it's enough to build a bit of a buffer it just seems that safe has that freedom and creativity to stick on the jet and have that success it's not an out there composition but we wouldn't expect that really from guild considering this is a map that they like to ban out as much as fracture at the point in time i tell a lie that was your scene on the raise but i just yeah, I don't know how long Safe has been a duelist for, but I got them mixed up. But they did previously run the raise and now they've switched the jet. But this is very important now for Vitality. They have to win here. So uh, the million dollar question, Zesh, can they do it? Do you see, do you see a scenario where we uh, go to map four? Yes, I do see a scenario. It, it could be somewhat likely. At the same time, Guild is insanely confident in what they're doing. They really don't feel like they're, there's too much pressure on them. It doesn't feel like they're just mostly on the edge of their seat and don't know if they can close it out. They have started this qualifier with insane strength and they might just end it with ultimate might. We're, we're going to see, but I do believe that this could be a 3-0. Ooh, yeah. well, we'll see, we'll see, because Vitality, they have to win here if they want a chance to qualify for VCT right here today. Over to you, Mitch and Tom. Well, thank you very much, guys. Uh, Sue, and of course, the president and vice president of mm. the Astra Fan Club. Very happy and excited that we were able to get them on the show here today. Tom, I'm ready to jump on into Split. We have had a dominant game from Guild so far, but the scorelines have been close, and I feel like you have a little bit of faith in Vitality coming into this map. Yeah, I'd, I'd say the if you, again, looking at the sort of composition they have coming in, I quite like the look of it. You've got that double Julius where I think Cadaver is going to be more comfortable on his jet. Vac has always been very good on Rays. And then you've got Shadow on a Breach, which has been something I've enjoyed for an incredibly long time. I think going all the way back to the early days of FPX. So I, I think that this is where I see this team looking a little bit more comfortable. And on the other side of things, Guild, we really don't know much about. Again, it, it feels like they've got a lot of their comfort picks still in play. I, I am. I, the thing is, whenever I see a sky on this map, I would always like to see it with a Viper because I just love the little pop flashes you can do through the screens. But I, again, I, I don't think they're really reinventing the wheel or anything crazy here. The only surprise is that, yeah, no rays and a jet instead. Indeed, yeah, it's something we've seen from Safe a couple of times so far. Kind of hinted at, you know, on some other maps like your bind, you'll see some teams abandon the the jet. But safe, he didn't ever abandon it. He's always playing it. Oh, the wall goes up and the dash is already in. Kata behind enemy lines, but Leo spots him and Brahms falls right after. Things are looking good for Vitality here in the pistol round with some strong duels going their way. Or for Gil. Names are swapped. Yes. <laughs> it's, gone, it's gone the guild way. Oh, and safe. He's been so good in the Spike pistol rounds with this sheriff. The only man left to send. Uh, they haven't actually spotted him. But Trex, well, he even leaped with surprise. But he's going to be able to find the kills nonetheless. It is going to be an early round coming up for guild. And no way, we're going to have a tech yes. pause because I imagine we're about to just switch switch the sides that everything's on just so it's not as confusing. Like if, if it yeah. bamboozles Mitch that's enough to assume that it's caught at and least I mean, three other people. I That's that's the beautiful thing about kind of being in the moment, right? I saw Kata die, you know? I know Kata <laughs> pretty well. I like to think I know the team that Kata plays for. Uh, but when I glanced, I was like, oh, Vitality, five players. I was like, oh, okay, I guess I'm wrong somehow. But yeah, <laughs> we'll be jumping back in the moment. They'll, they'll flip that back around. Guild with a good start, one to zero. Not really what I was hoping for. Honestly, my heart was set on Vitality winning the pistol purely because I want to see them get off to a good start. I want to see them propel themselves into that lead so that they're not left in this position where they're 8-1, 9-1 down and having to fight back into a half yeah. and then barely uh, losing the map. Like If they can get off their feet 
at the start of the game, we could end up with a fourth map coming out of this and with Vitality uh, fighting back into the series for sure. But for now, I find it hard to side with anyone but Guild. They've just looked, they've been able to pull off uh, too many convincing early uh, halves and early Careful. maps so far for me. I think as well, though, that the problem with what's happening with Vitality is every map that they are choosing has a, a fairly favored side like they've gone into breeze they've gone into split sure. so both times guild now they get the attacking side of breeze and then they get the defensive side of split and also they're they're winning a lot of the pistol rounds or at least the first pistol so at each time it seems to be that yeah that there's like an extreme deficit coming through vitality to face off against and i will say credit where it's due they've done quite well with it and hey if, if they can somehow steal this round away with some pistols that would be great even just a few kills here though is going to be enough well, we already have Sander drop to start with. These pistols are being dealt with, but one-for-one -one trades are not the way you want this to go. And Russ makes sure that he cleans it up <laughs> nice and easily. It was looking like they were under a little bit of threat for a moment, but that was a short-lived moment. That's impressive as well, because he, he not only had to be in that close angle versus pistols, but he had to dodge the fault line. So there was so much going on in his head, it just still manages to be as clinical as that, landing all of the shots. So, hey, props where it's due, gets him ever closer to those Seekers once again. And, well, we, we saw the impact that it had on the previous map of Vine. Now, looking over at Kata, and he gets absolutely nothing. So considering that it was an opening kill for Vitality, good recovery from Gil. Yeah, definitely. 2-0 to zero on the board. Pretty much uh, the way you would expect, I suppose, when you look at the timeline, definitely. when you look at it on paper. But as we said, there were there were a few uh, flickers of opportunity there for their opponents. This is where the, the true test really comes. And honestly, where the full might of the defensive side can be shown off. Playing into a bonus round on this map, first of all, safe is going to be buying Rifle. He's the only player... Uh, really putting himself down to no cash for the next round, although Trax has also Here. got a Phantom he's able to buy up in the next comfortably. But Safe will have his ultimate, uh, either coming into the next or he'll be one ult orb away. So it, it makes sense uh, for him to invest, even if Guild end up losing this. And that makes their, what should be a week by round, and a bonus, that much more strong, uh, that much more strong, indeed. Uh, one of the things I would look at, though, is for Guild, Having these pistols on this map in particular, or having the Spectres on this map in particular, there are plenty of close range angles for them to fight on. So it's how they use these rifles in particular that I'm sort of curious about. Because right now we're seeing that they're the ones, you know, holding down inside of ropes, which is safe wanting to just get aggressive, and then Trex playing up in heaven on, on, on range. But this A side is left open, which is exactly where Vitaly is. They're so confident as well that safe will at least get one kill that they've actually let the orb go into Russ because he was the one defending Russ to get that orb in the first place. So they're almost playing in for a couple of orbs for the next round, not just the blade storm. So I like that they're actually managing those orbs in that way. A little dink to start things off. Not going to do as much damage as maybe they would hope. And it is going to be the site lost. And, and this is where things get a little bit tougher when you do have those SMGs in play. Going for these retakes, taking these ranged battles, Sender just shutting down a couple of players. Again, there will at least be a trade back and they do still have the rifles which are yet to really be spotted oh that timing it's given safe the opportunity to walk through smoke looks like they're gonna just blitz straight out in fact they've dodged the flashes on the timing shadow used of all his utility now they have nothing left to work with on vitality side in terms of util but right. that's when they just execute guild very well handled yeah, and I, I think both teams have sort of handled their, their sort of like bonus round scenario e extremely well. Like neither really letting too much slip, a single kill going in the other direction. And I, I expect that this round is going to be an early battle for ultimate orbs for guild. Like they have potential to get two pretty impactful alts online. Bladestorm definitely going to be the main one because otherwise safe's not going to have a weapon. Yeah, indeed. I think uh, as we... As we pretty much played out early that old dwarf has to be fought for in this round unless they found that kill but he's got it that's gonna be blade storm activated wall down on a as well so they can start to rotate in but they've lost control of mid completely still have control over heaven and a camera watching for vent room but safe is a perfect opportunity to use this blade storm now get up close to them as guild defend up in heaven Buying the time for that blade storm to come through, but they're watching for it. Exactly Sender, wise to his tricks, picks up the flank, and now a 4v3. Guild on the back foot, and Vitality can take this wherever they want with all the information to play with. Oh, 
Russ Enough. needs to go absolutely huge once again. He comes up with two. He gives Leo a chance. The last play is low, and that's the spike on the ground. It's going to come into a one versus one. Bram's facing off against Leo. Two players you would definitely want in these sort of scenarios. And Leo is not going to sit around waiting. He's expecting the push to come through from spawn. Now, this actually gives Bram's an opportunity to retrieve the spike and potentially spike. just leave with it. He's actually just going to wait. He's going to wait for Leo to maybe even come back to try and check on it once again. 30 seconds left. With 30 seconds left, though, yeah, Brahms is kind of losing his nerve on this one. Doesn't want to sit around for all too much longer, and so it's time to move to the site now. It looks like he'll get a plant. I doubt he's going to expect Leo to be this close already. 15 seconds. And Leo starts to step towards the site. He's heard the drop. Leo has all the info to play with. Ten seconds he's left. creeping up closer and closer by the second. Plant about to come through Five just seconds. as he's rounding the corner. That'll be when Brahms is backing off! But Bram still wins the fight. The headshot delivered. The round will go to Vitality in the end. Yeah, there, there is a reason why Brams has survived pretty much every single roster move that has happened throughout this Vitality roster. And it is because he's so good in those sort of scenarios. So good at finding multi-frags and, well just positioning himself perfectly and again russ playing incredibly well to get anything from that sort of scenario I, one of the things i really want to highlight though especially with this vitality roster that has excited me the most is when both kata and vac are on duelists you get this almost beautiful little double entry duel that a lot of the time will just run in if kata doesn't get the kill vac's normally available for the trade so we're gonna see that throughout this map for now it's much more of a, a spread out default just because of the weaponry that's on hand but if they get rolling that's when i think vitality truly gets scary and for a couple of the maps well both maps so far today i feel like both of them have been somewhat missing it's interesting as well it's just you say that about browns but i'm surviving every iteration of the roster it's something that i know a bunch of other teams alliance included uh, when i was on that roster tried to acquire uh as a player when okay why why have they got two kills already not Guild again. should not be able to fight into this round. I thought this, I thought this was almost story time, but it turns out that it, it is actually a round that needs to be fought for. With 50 seconds left, Vitality have no direction, and the worst part is these seekers are giving away the A play. But I think that's almost the plan. Vitality want to destroy those, rob them of the information. Just 30 seconds left, and they have to make a choice on where they're going to push into on this. There are two players on either side. There is no easy way to close this round out. Left. Yeah, the, the one positive is that no weaponry has actually been retrieved. It's still just the pistols from the early round. So you in every single it. firefight, there is a significant advantage. And that is a beautiful cosmic divide. You might be thinking it's an eco. They shouldn't need to use it, but it is huge. It doesn't matter, though. One of the jewels has been isolated. And because of that, Safe has gone back. He gets a oh! kill here. The round is over and he lands the headshot down, onto Shadow. Beast. That's the spike on the ground. It's done. Brams might be a clutch king, but he's not winning this one. And they know he's trapped in the corner. Guild have done it again. It is just pistols. And they managed to take it with four surviving that i cannot believe that i think it's very clear from how we started uh tonally in that round that we were not expecting it to be one of any note uh the worst case scenario was pretty much the start i thought they'd lose with two they'd like maybe lose two players and that's it but when they lost the two straight away on that mid push i got very worried indeed and three to two we've ended up wow vitality have just been kicked in the delicates look at that buy a judge, a guardian, a phantom, a sheriff, and a specter. I'll tell you what, for a second there, I was scared I'd forget the name of one of the guns. <laughs> it'd, all, it'd be that moment. Yeah. Name all five. Go for it. Off the top of your head. But, uh, that, that's you know, the thing, I guess though. I played enough. And because of that, Guild actually, like, to, to get to win the round was huge, but they actually picked up a gun on every player as well. So they they brought in four rifles to this round that they were already saving to buy into. So they're going to be good economy-wise. Now, you can see the Rolling Thunder being set up. The Flash is going to be put through, but that's where the Judge comes into play. Good trade from Rush. He actually gets a second as well. This man is so good at just getting doubles out of absolutely nothing. Now, he's been stunned up, but he should be all right by the time they actually come back into the site. The Flash is going to make things a little bit more awkward and Bram's looking to try and wrap back around but Cavalry's arriving and Cold Amenta eventually down, sprays beat. down two of the remaining players. Sender, he was on the lurk hoping to catch a rotation but now well he has to be a hero. Yeah, still a couple of gaps in this uh defense how's, for kills. How good you're climbing? Yeah. <laughs> you got an ice pick? 
3v1 doesn't really show them where where his opponents are, obviously, so I, I feel like for Sender. Left. You gotta just uh, look for some kills. You don't want to survive with this pistol, so running out onto site, Weapon I guess, here. yeah, look, he can at least get a... Oh, he's not even gonna go for it. Yeah, just walking out with the sheriff in hand. I don't blame you. Ten seconds left. Time to die and get your money. Was yeah, I, again. We've seen this a few times, where guild have been in a situation where they maybe should have lost a round, where their economy should have been challenged uh, on one of the previous maps, destroyed, yeah. Ooh, and they've now. suddenly... It breezes exactly what I'm thinking of, right? They suddenly end up in this position where they're stacked on Econ, and, like, everything goes their way. The threat that killed face and the impending doom that we can sometimes see just dissipates. And within seconds, it's like within two or three rounds of kill just dominating, you're like, oh, and now they've got stacked money for quite well, a while. Now, the thing, the thing I wonder as well is like, who is the creator of the cheese strats? Like, is this Barber? Is it Mave? Is, yeah. is it going to be Cold Mentor himself? Or is it a combination of all three? Because those are three pretty big brains that you've got sat, two of them behind the scenes, one in the server, because this is now a few times today that we have seen like a, an idea just come out, be thrown in as like a little cheesy thing that might just work, and it has, and it's put Guild in a wonderful position and Vitality have just got to be sat there just like, well, if, if it was based on gum rounds, they probably would have won Breeze, but that that's, yeah. it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. Yeah, these nasty pistol rounds, especially that mid one was great, and look at this. With pistols, Vitality can't really do the same. They come out of heaven and just get mowed down. I gotta say, maybe, maybe it's even Russ. You know, that, that mid push that came out with the Sheriffs? Four players maybe. down mid, take those challenges? That's a UKCS play if ever I've seen one. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean... I don't know. Still I, waiting whoever one was. day see an Irish play. Yeah, listen. <laughs> We had Cinder for a bit. Honestly, I'll, I'll tell you who the Irish player is going to be. It's going to be Connor. Like, the day you see Connor on the top team, y'all are going to be scared. Someone give him a chance, please. Did, did Connor have like a, like, I can't remember what his name was going into the qualifier, but it was like <laughs> something that just made me laugh. I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was. That would be Connor. Get out yeah, of my was, way. It was very funny. That was it. It was a McNuggets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sue's yeah. just messaged us. That would be Connor. <laughs> uh. We got signed to Mobby Star. I didn't even know this. Let's go, baby. But why is he calling himself McNugget? <laughs> <laughs> trying to get your attention, you know? And, oh, you know, the best part is that it's in lowercase because if he does it in uppercase, he apparently can get sued. So he's Bad done boy. his research. He's really thought about this, and I respect that. And in the future, he'll go for that sponsorship. It's, it's a genius go. play. I wouldn't mind being the, uh, getting some free McNuggets. Sender, though, after already finding an opener on the other side of the map, it's a switch up to B, leaving an isolated player to try and hold on. It hasn't worked out. And although there's a rotation coming through from Cordamenta, I, I wonder if this is just going to come down to them trying to hold Spike them into planted. the site. Because financially, Guild should be in a pretty decent spot. Whereas their opponents, well, if they were to lose too many players here, that would be an issue. A guild of push down mid as well here. You're looking at Cold Dementa, maybe trying to catch an angle on Brams, drop that rifle towards the end. But they would have needed a flurry of frags immediately to, to even think about going for this. Uh, Cold Dementa's got a good opportunity. He's hearing lots of stat. Oh, no, he doesn't. He does not have a good opportunity at all. He's been off. Nice and clean by Vitality. This is the kind of round they needed to really propel themselves back into yeah. it, get their economy a little bit healthier as well. And again, if, if this even ends like 7-5 in favor of Guild, I would consider that a good half of Vitality, especially with the way things started. And, and that, that's almost been the thing that's been a bit of a kicker in this series. Like, don't get me wrong, Guild have played incredibly well, but you remove some of these like very, very close rounds with these like cheesy strategies, which clearly is something they've worked on. And Vitality, I, I think they at least have a map and, and, and they'd be in the lead here, but they're still making things very competitive, even though they're having those sort of slip up issues that are getting caught out by these plays. Now, of course, as we mentioned, financially, no problems Caution whatsoever here. for Guild. They're coming in with a buy and they still have enough to go for one in the next round. And this is the first time we see the operator for safe and he's going to use it to try and dominate Cut, mid. Yeah, but mid's not where they're coming in. It's A-Heaven that Vitality want to fight for. Two players on the A-side, and 
I mean, it's hard for Safe to get back in here with the op normally, but he's just gone straight up that rope, and he's going to look to fight them as they come on through. The push-up on B, though, is starting to scare me, Tom. I'm seeing Russ inside of B main, and there were two players, both Sender and Brams, that were waiting for him. But now we've seen the rotation from Brams. It looks like Sender's about to leave as well. And so that's good map control for Guild to just hold like that. Uh, even th even still, though, the, the slow play has maybe caused some doubts in Guild's mind. You, you can see just the fact that Vitality are just sitting waiting. There's now only two players remaining on this site. But Here. The, the problem is Guild are using this time. They flash twice outside of B, so that's information. They've also now killed off the one player in mid, which is the Lurk. They have every single piece of information they could ever need with 40 seconds left. And now Safe is back in that spot once again to try and catch them as they go through. And he already managed to catch that kill on mid. Scott Free Dash still online after that frag, which is the most important thing for the angle he's holding. He can dash down into the vents nice and safely. Here comes a showstopper looking for the site itself. Gravwell, Dane, Kata going to be dropped. Here's the play for safe, but Brams catches him. A. Left on 10 health. Vac low as well. No time really for them to get this done. This should be an easy cleanup for Gil. I've seen Vac go towards the site, but there, there is simply no time. Uh, look Leo? at Russ as well. It, 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 it may not even matter for this peak because they know that the flank's coming through anyway. Brams, this needs to be a truly ludicrous play to try and get anything done in this one. They are waiting for him. Biffle whiff from Cold Amenta, but it's all right. He's got Trex alongside him to close it with a triple. And yeah, I, I think this is an example of Guild playing the, the information game almost perfectly. Like Russ having the double flashes through B, what may not have been noted is that he pushed all the way through the spawn just after those couple of flashes. So there was a four man stack for Vitality to push into. And it, it, the thing is, it's, it's almost like a, a harsh reality for them because they did do very well with the delay strategy. It just went a little bit too long. So obviously after a while, then guilds start working. If they maybe cut that by like 20 seconds or even 15, they actually get a take with there's only two players on the site. So it, it's not the plan that's wrong. It's just that guild was so proactive in that ladder round that it then becomes impossible for Vitality not to be pushing into a stack. Well, this is the thing. There is no easy way. There is no correct or incorrect way to actually to, to play these kind of rounds, to play those slow rounds, because the reality is it has to be tailored. You can have a baseline of how you want to play it, but it has to be tailored to your opponents. If you're playing a team that never rotates, that refuses to rotate. What's the point of faking, you know? And that's obviously yeah. a very extreme example, but just to, to really that's underline that, and I think that's where we look at this guild team and they've been really solid on those mid round calls they're being cautious in not leaving sites completely open but if they are going to cause those if they are going to stack up on a for example they'll have rust push up b and take that little bit of extra Rock control understanding that playing passive on one side of the map means the other side is weaker so you either need to have an insane player which you've got rust there anyways oh, and, and put them left. aggressive so they get the extra information and that extra bit of timing to it really helps secure it Guild of a perfect uh, way of playing that and not overextending and giving those advantages away. Now, we're going to see a duel into safe, but he's actually missed. And now he's stunned on site, Blade Storm stun. out to try and defend. It's a gorgeous stun, but he's still alive, and the Flash will catch him as well. He's being hit by every single piece of utility, but they haven't managed to clear him. Everything that came through, and then the rotation's there as well. Leo, Cold Amenta putting another couple in the grave, and while it will be closed out again by Guild, Again, I, I like the setup from Vitality. The idea was good, but they're just not quite able to capitalize on a lot of the little gimmicks that they have set up. And because of that, taking too long to kill safe means the whole roster's there by the time they actually get in. And please, please, attack side jet. I don't want to see people saying Cat has got three kills. S split. Attack side. Jet is fine. That's your job. You go into the site, you entry like that, you die nine times out of ten. That's what's expected of you. Coming into the next half, though, I will say Cat had better step it up. His safe's op and safe's jet has felt very strong. That behold was as bad as possible. He misses his opening shot. He uses his dash. That lands him in a stun, and they're rushing him on sight. He activates his blade storm and dances around that site expertly, using his teammates and the utility that's put down to isolate fights one at a time, and close the round out. Even when he dies, he's immediately traded by Leo. I feel like safe was super impactful in that round, even without getting like, you know, big aces or 4Ks yeah. or whatever. 
I need to see the same from Cadavera, justifying to me why he's playing that jet right now. Because on the attack, it hasn't been finding them the space. It's no criticism of him being on whatever kills, but it hasn't been finding them the space that they need oh, so far. This is a nice spot. Well, yeah. sure, Again, guys. we're going to see what is a, a hero it. rifle, the, a couple, I guess, and then a few pistols alongside it. So expectation puts Guild getting to eight here. As said, like five rounds for vitality, good spot, four, workable. Anything less, and then I really am in it. Like, sure, curse, haha, whatever. But, like, realistically, you would expect Guild to close it out from there. So, uh, for vitality's sake, I'm hoping we see a little bit more. And, and as said, they, they've had some decent ideas. It, it's just that Guild have been so adaptive that I, I, I think that thus far that's why they're in the lead. It's it definitely feels that way. <laughs> that's with an off. Here. He pushed yeah. all the way up to the dash. utility there. Yeah, it feels so safe just being able to dash out of there. I think that's. Uh, I hate. I hate. It's. It's like casting big <laughs> all over again. Oh, I can't wait for safe versus big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be great. But uh, no, here, here, here on the attack side, vitality with these weak weapons. Now three pistols coming into this guardian. This is a depressing situation and a last stand of sorts as they attempt to do what little they can here. Five rounds would be great. I need that fourth at a minimum. They would want to give themselves a little bit of leg room because if that pistol goes to guild again, thirty seconds left, and things just start to to really spiral. If it ends up at nine three, yeah, they're running out of time to do anything here. The the slow in play as well is always just ratty. And while running straight into Leo, he might get caught in a graph well, but it doesn't even matter at this point. If anything, the remaining players either need to save or die. And well, <laughs> Leo is just so clinical. Eight rounds onto the board, Guild ed edging the ever closer to joining the rest of the VCT roster. And, and then the scary thing for Vitality as well, we, we got to cast their previous game versus Big. There were moments in that game, well, they had to fight back to overtime, what, twice? To actually win that game? I think so, yeah. So it, it's not like that is a surefire victory. And then you have to go back through the, the other open qualifier, which we already know will have the likes of G2 still back in there again. So it, it's, a, right there. It, it's a scary prospect not making yeah. it through first time. I mean, open qual, two spots. Well, it be closed qualifier for... So. Closed qual, yeah. But you have you have G2, Giants, like, uh, Heretics next week is not going to be fun for any teams. And that's... Without even mentioning the bunch of uh, lower tier teams that have a huge amount of upset potential. It's damn scary uh, to have to go through next week. But Vitality might not have another choice. They really need to shift their ass into gear here. And they are currently on three rounds. Coming into the final one of the half with a rolling thunder. The rest of the ults, I don't think going to be, well, that impactful, that close by to be pulled out. Cold Demantis nice even come in with an Odin and taken that, down. Look Brass. where it was. Look where he is. That's and look the where worst the thing I've ever died. seen. <laughs> that he, is gross. Did he, I, I'm guessing he maybe used a smoke and then spam through it when the orb was being taken because it definitely looks like Brams. Well, no, actually, Brams had ult already coming into the round, so I don't know why he'd be on orb. Either way, absolutely. The Cold Demand is a lunatic when it comes to playing with that. I, th I don't think they're going to expect safe to be pushing. He tanked some of that aftershock, and he's right behind them already. That rolling thunder buys them a little bit of time, but ultimately it comes down to safe's timing on whether this will be closed out. Maybe it comes down to the Odin of Cold Amenta, who's on site, just demolishing them. And this round, surely done and dusted here. Back. Oh. The final man standing Back now in a 1v3, a. and they know exactly where he's going to be coming from. Holding the angle is Leo, and we will end up at 9-3. to three. <laughs> It's a thing. Jeez. Oh, God. And, uh, of course, and everything thrown into that one from Guild. They, they had uh, an Odin go in, even a spare op put down for safe to have some fun with, but Leo 15-3. We have raved about this youngster for such a long time. Roster changes, different players. There was a reason that, like, even while getting rid of some huge talent, Guild kept this kid around and while performing unbelievably once again. It, it, it's it's inevitable at this stage. Like, I don't think anybody's surprised by that, but yeah. A 9-3 to three half vitality. They go on to the defensive side. We've said this already. They are basically fighting an uphill battle in the majority of maps because of the choices they make. They choose into the maps that are very one-sided. They know that they're going to have to make a comeback a lot of the time, so uh, let's not count them out just yet. 
The fault line into the push to start things out. Kata has some ideas here alongside Shadow. They push Trex back, but little do they know Rust is waiting for them. Baiting them in as Trex, making all that noise from afar, but they won't step forward. They won't give it away. Guild moving to the B side instead now, hoping that they've thinned out the defense, maybe pulled to rotate. But that early aggression, I'm sure they don't think they have, though. This is where they have to try to just break their way in, find a duel. And Brahms might give it to them. He's stepping out wide. He's being spotted, and they're pursuing. The shots aren't landing for Brahms, and he's under a lot of pressure now on the site. That comes down to help, and Nate has used blast packs and everything. With all that utility, they're calling for the rotates. They're saying, we need help on B. But in fact, it's the A site. The guild are going towards the frenzy Russ in the hands so of Russ has ready. snuck his way in after hiding in that corner earlier. Nobody played into him and let him take those sneaky kills. So he said, okay, cool. I'll make my own space. And here's the reward as he sneaks up behind Sender, who is about to be infuriated. Russ, don't you take that knife out, thank God. He finishes him off with a pistol. 30 seconds left. Yeah, they've still got to deal with Kada, though. One more defender on this side. Let's see what he can do. A first kill at least. We'll put it into a three versus three when the retake begins. But the site has been lost. A plant guaranteed. And, and that's the thing. The remaining players don't know what angles are held. With Rust being that far forward, they have no idea where the remainder are. Save taking a big oh! risk. A plant flies! What? Two for one. They didn't even need that little lucky shot. But the fact is now, Shadow is all that's left. A one versus three to try and bring something back. And while even when opportunities put into his hands he's not gonna get anything no there's match. one sneaking around towards the site the right click actually does a little bit of damage both were on 74 it was doable towards the end but with Gil picking up that pistol tom feels like one of the final nails has now been well and truly driven into vitality's coffin 10 to 3. This comeback would be incredible it is attack side split for guild so it's a tougher one to make it happen in but Look, unless there's a force buy here with an immediate answer up, I find it hard to believe a bonus round, a buy round, and then all the other opportunities they have that Guild would not be able to close this out. It seems so unlikely. And indeed, there is going to be a force buy, so Vitality are going to end it here one way or another. We got two shotguns and different ones at that. Now, back, we've already seen, like, holding these close angles, he's, he's, he's a little bit of a rat, I won't lie. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just gross, and I, I don't want them to push this now. Oh, never mind! Oh, he's just been destroyed. Just trying to tap a few bullets through Shadow with a Bucky. I, okay, there's one. That's something, at least. A little bit of a gap within the wall, and he's going to delay them at least a little bit. A chance here for something, and oh, he's still doing a lot of damage. Some seriously low players on the other side. The safe is just running riot. Finally, he's put into the grave and gives them a chance. But there's only Sender left. Oh, he's managed to recover a rifle, though. And down goes Trex. Low HP for Russ. And even Cold Amenta won't last too long. There's the first dropped already, but he'll be killed oh. in the end. Sender comes so close to being the hero for Vitality. They oh. force bought up so much. And even with the damage coming out of a bookie, which I did not expect to deliver on Shadow up close, they're now sitting 11 to 3. Their economy is in the garbage. I mean, look at this. Vitality again going to force it up and I guess force out the rest of the game because it's not a pretty buy, is it, Tom? Uh, no, no, not exactly. I, I will say that it, it's similar for Guild because they lost so many weapons and it was only the one save rifle. They do have the benefit of the fact that save managed to nigh on kill half the team. So he's now got himself a blade. So a little bit low. That is audacious from back. I, I don't know how he gets away with peeking that far in, especially after getting punished in the last round. But hey, gets them an opener, backs out there. Well played. A blast pack push up close, having your fault line at start around. Really, really strong start. Guild lose another player here on mid. That is such a valuable shot connected by Kata. Going in with a sheriff. Getting out of there with his life. A 5v3 now. Safe needs to do so much. With this blade storm in hand as he creeps his way into heaven. A first shot not going to land. And you see immediately Kata just backs off. He doesn't want to mess with that blade storm. And then he does. Oh. And that's that's okay. why he didn't want to mess with it. Yeah, you don't give him a, a tight angle to jiggle peek off. That's the chance for safe to now turn this back on his head. What was the lifeline? 
could still become dangerous. The steps through. Safe's found another one. He's left this B site open, but the spike's been dropped. And now he needs to do something truly yeah. ridiculous. He goes through it and just gets another one. This really is falling apart. This should have been over by now. Spike ridiculous. I, uh, safe is on 22 HP. He's picked up a guardian. Now he's close. A brass oh. manages to shut him down, leaving Trex alone. One versus two. Best opportunity for Vitality so far. Time taking away. No idea where Trex is. And I think they're just hoping that he'll make a peek eventually and give himself away. As they creep in closer to the site. There's the first spotted up top. Trex is a very good idea of what's going on now. But Brams is a little bit too quick. Vitality find a fourth. 7 HP. <sighs> oh, it's, it really, uh, really wasn't far away, was it? No, it's a long way from being comfortable. That's for damn sure. But they managed to do it. Seven rounds what between them. Defensive side advantage. And now, should be able to get somewhat of a, a buy strung together. Yeah. And, and the, on the other side as well, there really shouldn't be much. Like, this was already, like, bear in mind, there was barely anyone surviving. One player in the previous round. So, for Guild, their money sucks. The only player with anything is actually going to be safe. Because, well, he, he's got so many kills over the last few rounds. So, a chance for him to... Maybe take a kill or two here and there, but ultimately I, I'm more so looking at Vitality. If they're going to have any chance of bringing this back, to keep this one squeaky clean. Make sure you're not losing any players. Okay, maybe if the Spectre goes, that's not going to be the end of the world. But ultimately, farm up as many ultimates as you can. And make sure that when it is a buy coming back up, you, you're not surrendering that 12th round with ease. I mean, that, that's exactly it, right? For Guild right now, there is no pressure. Uh, because they have so many opportunities to close this out. They're 2-0 up in maps, so they just need to win this one. They only need two rounds. They got plenty of opportunities to do it. For Vitality, they cannot make a mistake. They need to constantly have... Honestly, it feels like they almost need reserve ultimates, right? They need to have that economy to save rounds that start to fall apart. If you come in right now at 11 to 4 down and decide to, as soon as that showstopper comes in, as soon as that rolling thunder is there, you entry the round with that, you either have to have a very, very good cycle of utility or you're going to have to, or, uh, of, sorry, ult economy, or you're going to have to keep one of those on the back burner. Um, your really impactful one. So again, your showstopper, your rolling thunder. Uh, to save those rounds that, that might fall apart where guild maybe have safe push and get two kills or something like that uh it's really hard man like looking at this kind of score line as a team that's that's behind by this much and trying to figure out even in a round where you win it matters how much you commit to that round which is scary um I, I, I think the yeah the, the worry as well is like you know at some point you're going to come up against like a, a a silly amount of ultimates especially if guild just save them up and try and just spam them in a round so it yeah it becomes tough but then again the ultimates they have I, I think only a couple of them I can see really being completely game changing nonetheless a lot of control take this actually the spike so there you go uh, sign sealed and delivered. Oh, they managed to recover it somehow. The nade does take down Rust, though. Gonna have a nice, easy swing. Oh, okay. They fall back. Give it up for a moment. Not the round where you think Guild will do a lot of damage, but still, you don't want to start it out like that. At least they have managed to shut Cadaver up. It looks like Trax is gone. Nasty angle by Sander in a round like this. You'll never really expect it. And it, if he was there alone, I'd be quite annoyed. But he has Shadow covering him from heaven, making sure that there's no push behind him, uh, which is already confirmed pretty much by the trap wires. But more so, he was there to peek off his contact. I, I don't like that he's still here, uh, but he has the cam to check every now and then, I guess. So he just feels that little bit safer. <gasps> oh, no, that, that could actually be a plonk. Yeah, the dash left. across is almost going to guarantee it. So some extra credits coming through for the next round. You can see Safe trying to bait it out now that he's actually managed to retrieve a rifle. And it looks like they're actually more focused on just trying to do damage in this round. The, the plant doesn't really matter so much to the side of kill. They want to try and get someone's peak. And while well, Vigo's landed another, doing a lot with this pistol. Three kills in a round with very little for guild. And well, as I said, I, I wanted this one for Vitality to be a, a nice, clean victory and a build-up of economy. Instead, while well, Leo is, is still just gross. Yeah, the concerns that we had of, okay, you know, in a buy round, you can't really commit too much because you'll need your ultis to potentially save rounds. 
you'll need your your utility to save rounds into retakes you know that there's so much to concern yourself with now every single action that you take you have to think about the consequences because it could just lose you the game um with a butterfly effect later on but when you look at vitality coming into that round we needed them to win that cleanly because if they are to streak together this many rounds they better be damn good versus the rifles and even better versus the pistols but if taking the first two to start with rez comes through right after though after leo finding that kill in the previous round he had this online Oh, nice that back. was sick. Spike down, B. Nice little angle to manage to find a kill back. Still, though, it's even. Kata coming in with a blade storm. Oh, he almost gets caught out. And Vax still just having to survive alone on the site, but he's doing a great job of it. Nade even goes back out, recovered after a couple of kills, and Sender just misses the timing. I don't know if they will have heard him from behind. It leaves Leo alone, and this time there's nothing he can do. A triple for Vac showing up in the server, and a sixth on the board for Vitality is going to put Guild on an eco once again. Third time lucky, maybe, for Vitality. We know that this is where Guild feel a little bit less comfortable. Oh, we highlighted map. that this is the map that Vitality looked like. They have a chance to take it across the line on and now just five behind. It's still a lot of rounds to build up, and I still don't feel like they'll get it done, but the hope is maybe starting to ignite in the players' hearts. Guild on yeah. this attack with pistols, only set to make this uh, an even brighter future for the defensive side of Vitality. You should easily get out of this with 11 to seven. And again, we want to see that. We need to see them take control of this round. Yeah, that hasn't necessarily been the case against a lot of these pistols. Oh, the push-up from Sender. It's a nice little pop flash. And he's going to get himself a multi-frag off. It's still a rifle. Could be picked up. But Shadow's alongside him to at least put another in the dirt. Not really something that can be fought for anymore, especially with Trex having the spike. Oh, oh I didn't see him initially, but eventually the reaction's kicked in. Now, 50 seconds left. At least he has the spike, but he's running into three players. First is back. Sat on his left side. 54 HP. He could have been one. It wouldn't have made a difference. Nice clean headshot. Four rounds between them. He'll come in here though with a buy, and so I'm gonna be a little bit more cautious. Uh, I think the defensive side of Vitality will be as well, but I think you, you have to look at this now and say the ultis they've got, especially with Russ having those Seekers to play with, they're strong on the attack, but Vitality have their way back into rounds. That rolling thunder for retaking either of these sites is so damn strong. I almost feel like Guild are going to want to deal with Shadow before, like, the, playing a straight A or straight B hit is almost impossible at this point. Bit of spam as Kata is expected, his aggression is something that Guild seem more than prepared for. And actually, it's looking like that destroyed. ultimate might not be saved. Shadow almost preparing it for a, I've got a push your into mid. Seeker's gonna go through. It will just be on to Russ. He's the only person who's been ulted, and they actually get Here. very little for it. He's not cleared out. They do rotate back into the B site, though, and we'll have a decent amount of players here. Russ has been caught in the way. Kata with the AWP delivering, and he's got two teammates to cover his crossover. Brams now standing alone as the only cover for that operator, and he's gonna swing into a fight. Luckily, Trex runs out of ammo, runs out of the site as well. He's bailing, pushed back by the utility. A 1v3 looking very, very difficult indeed. As these players are just lined up and waiting. Brabs misses the first shot. The peak in heaven not going according to plan. Trex is being given an opportunity here. Oh, this would be such a devastating round for Vitality to lose. The, the spike is being retrieved by now. And Trex has a choice to make. 30 seconds 30 on the seconds clock. Left. Barely any time to rotate. And he won't hit the shot onto Shadow. So the round goes to Vitality, but again, it comes very close. Yeah, again, Vitality, though, having a pretty decent read on the scenario. Sure, the ultimate wasn't necessarily the most important thing, but they expected it to be a mid-split into that B site. And Kata does an excellent job in this round of just finding jewel after jewel. Like, getting the timing on the repeat, making left. sure that he's not being isolated in the process and having the support of the rest of his team while doing so. So it's getting a little bit close now. Three rounds, the difference on a, a defensive side of split. As said, it's definitely not something that's too difficult. And especially when teams don't normally play this map, I'll be honest, 
it is normally that attacking side where they struggle. That's where you don't have the preparation, the plans, the sort of aspects of your gameplay where everything goes wrong. Well, five rounds in a row seems like everything's gone wrong, so Guild are going to take a pause. Yeah, I, I think the fact as this scoreline closes in, Guild start to get more worried, and I think at 8-11, to 11, this is the perfect time to call for this kind of a pause. You've let a couple of scenarios play out, seen how it goes. Vitality, you're clearly gaining the upper hand again and again. You're coming into an eco right now. Guild will be facing 11 and 9. So this is kind of the round where you want to, first of all, make sure that Vitality don't have everything set up for them coming into the next. You don't want Vac, for example, to be able to take old orbs or, or massive amounts of kills without being traded out. That showstopper could be hugely impactful in the next round, which is going to be the biggest swing round we've seen so far here on Split. Guild will come in here with an intention. Read the defensive side, see what they're doing in the early round, figure out if we can find any gaps for the next one, for that buy round. Yeah, they're, they're also pretty wary after the last eco they faced off against. It, it was fairly aggressive. Like, you had Sender push up, Shadow with the pot flash, and uh, they're, they're trying to make sure that that doesn't happen again. The problem is they still have this defensive duo just slowing them down. So much utility available now. This time, he's actually completely isolated, and because of that, Sender's going to go down. Now, a decent grab well leaves Russ completely screwed. And Leo's going to get the exactly ult orb, but more importantly, he's also got a rifle. Holdemand has also snuck into heaven with the frenzy. They're aware they've given up that control, though, so they deal with him. Nice delivery by Trex. That's with a Spectre. This guy has now taken two kills. After punishing Sender up close and now deleting Brams, they have an opportunity to cross to site. Shadow stands in their way, but Leo has retrieved an actual rifle, a Phantom in his hands, but he's dropped. Remaining. And now Trex has to do it all by himself, the spike. A to be retrieved the rest of the defenders on their way and even with the rifle left. now in his hands this will be a very very tough clutch he's gonna push him close that was an ambitious play one that hasn't quite worked out two kills for them it's not terrible but this is where guild need to show it up show up otherwise vitality might be jumping back into the lead or at least contesting it yeah no for sure like the last few rounds have been fairly dominant like i, I think this was actually one of the closer ones and it was mainly based off just a couple of nice shots being connected by Trex. And I had the idea of basically just trying to collect that ultimate orb. So, yeah, I, I don't. I also don't mind this play at all from Trex. Like when you're in a one versus three, I think you expect there to be just utility denying you going for that plant anyway. So you want to try and isolate a jewel and give yourself a better chance with lesser oppositions available. Now, again, this is a full stack outside A. I think this is a complete pace change. And, well not expecting it up to be there i guess considering the setup from vitality they're, they're reading into this they're expecting guild to come for it three players around here no mid control at the start of the round they thought after the eco that guild would have gathered the information hey a's kind of weak we can get in there with pistols with specters let's do it with rifles so vitality sit on the site and say Player yeah sure dude you to want to come a go ahead a. they mow them down Guild running into that stack early. It was a gamble. They rolled the dice on what they thought was a clear weakness, but Vitality had already made the adjustment. They patched up that hole, and Guild got lured into the trap. Gorgeous brain games. Yeah, a wonderful adaptation coming in from Vitality. And that's the thing. We've seen this a couple of times now. When the buys have come up, there was an attempted play into the B site. The counter was there from Vitality. Now... They're attempting to go for the same sort of execution into the A site. The counter was there once again. A multitude of players. And also just having Kata there early to pick off any of the crazy aggressive plays. Now, speaking of crazy aggression, I'm waiting for this clock to tick down because Safe's got a hero. Forever. You don't see that every day. Not on a The operator, <laughs> the pistols beside him. A light shield's on safe, and indeed, attacking, pushing into those angles. If anyone was to do it, I think if you said any player, I'd probably roll my dice and say safe. He is, he is a lunatic. An aid landing right on top of him. He was patient, but not patient enough. Almost caught back, and now he's lost his life. The hero walked down, but it can be retrieved. And it will be, in the hands of Coldamenta. Oh, and Sender's gone down. Look at where Trex is. He's in their spawn. I was so preoccupied with the AWP on mid. And so are they. Trex just walked through A. Shadow trying to make sure that nobody's able to retrieve oh, no. the gun. He goes up over their own wall. Uses it against them. 
Sure, there's going to be an after plant here, but it is still only that operator as the one weapon in play. And Kana is waiting for it. Absolutely nothing comes. And while they have to try and make a two versus four stick with pistols, I don't see that happening. Well, they know where Brahms is. And they Brahms knows where they are. <laughs> Wait, a nice double. That will be closed out. Nice and clean. Well handled. Vitality 11 to 11. We are looking at... Honestly, a mind-boggling comeback. The vitality to fight their way back into this game. This is something that, yeah, I mean, if you run this back a hundred times, guild close this majority, but they are not comfortable on this map, and I think it is shining through. We had concerns about their attack, but I honestly thought after the pistol going their way in the second half, it was over. And yet, it had only just begun. Well, this is, again, it is sort of what I said earlier in the matchup, and the same when we saw them play up against Big, like... Uh, although there's definitely some issues here for vitality like certain sides of the map stuff that they need to work on the resilience and like mental fortitude of this team is something that impresses me the most because they have been down so many times now and fought it back like as said they managed to win two maps doing that versus big to even get here in the first place now uh, that said it's it's a silly amount of rounds that they've won in a row without making a, a single mistake to allow guild in again though guild just need that one moment get them to 12 reset their minds have that one player pop off the problem is they don't have the ults to do it either there's a couple that are close Recovering. three in fact available oh, yeah. if just one orb is found on the other side though we're, we're back online with both the rolling thunder and the showstopper so it's it's not getting any easier for guild as these rounds go on you know, a lot of the guild ultis here are passive ults so that ulti economy definitely swings in power towards vitality but it's the round to round utility that should lead Gil to victory, but so far that hasn't been the case. Perhaps in trouble. One kill and traded out, sight now open. There's only one player here to stop, and it's Shadow. He's gonna ult and he's all by himself. He has to deliver on this, and he's gonna be putting an aftershock, but they've evaded it entirely. He slowed them though. He's run that clock down. Rust in the back lines though is the big problem because he's now gonna catch back, swinging a little deeper, but Kata shuts him down, and now Shadow almost had the timing, but Cold Dementa went back to check it. Vitality on the back foot. 2v4, 2v3. Trex caught, up shot, not landing. Bladestorm comes out, Kata not able to deliver, and Guild have finally pushed up to 12. It has been a long journey, but they've woken up just in time to guarantee an overtime. I know, there'll be some people who might know this name, but there is a, a, pro a producer, Reese from Face It, who always had this, uh, this saying that it was like his rule that if it, whoever equalized the scoreline like whoever came back would always lose the round after they equalized it and I, it just seems to happen so often it's so painful to witness they won eight rounds in a row they finally go to take the lead and then guild just find one out of nowhere at rust just with a sneaky play being able to sit in behind and then just finding the kills elsewhere Still, of course, a huge amount of economy available for Vitality. And just because one has come onto the board, it doesn't mean we're not going to OT. No, it absolutely doesn't. Vitality will be fired up coming into this one. Cat is in trouble. It, it, this is... This is the player that needs to show up right now. We talked about it in the previous half. We talked about that jet defensive side, how much it can do. But now he's pushing forward right into the full force of guild. Getting out of there is going to be tough. The dash buys him that little bit of extra space. And he's away before they join him. Seekers on their way. He destroys them with the op. Now they're close, safe, looking to punish that operator right up in his face. And he'll get the first following up for more. Safe as a madman now on sight. Planting the spike as Shadow wants to get back in. But there's so many players oh, no. here. And he's caught with you till in hand. The showstopper, the last ditch attempt by Vac. It's found basically nothing so far. And it'll get nothing done again. Vitality are being dismantled at the last second. For 13 to 11, Guild take the series.